So you want to learn how to voice act? No problem at all. Voice acting is a massive growth area at the moment because most of the world's traditional actors, experienced or beginners, are having difficulties, of course, in getting live venues to actually perform in. And until the theatres and performance venues get back to full speed, a way to ramp up acting income is to record voiceovers, ideally in the safety and comfort of your own home studio. I mean, actors, just look at the benefits of voice acting. One, you don't need to learn any lines, just read the script. Two, you're not in vision, forget makeup, forget costume, record naked if you want. And once it's recorded, it's done. No need to perform the same lines every night on stage. But yes, I know, I understand. It's not the same experience as with a live audience, I agree. I'm really sorry venues have been shut. The good news is that corporate events and conferences have been replaced by a lot of media that need voiceovers. Insert videos on Teams and Zoom conferences and so on. So there is plenty of voiceover work to go around. And as well as e-learning scripts on top of that, promos, radio, TV ads, there are opportunities. And we haven't even mentioned game work, animations, audio books. So if you're a trained actor in any field and like to get into our world of voice acting, and just me, I've been doing this thing for 40 years, then uh, here are some voice acting tips for you from VoiceOver Masterclass. And please check out our full comprehensive voice acting course at voiceovermasterclass.com. Basically, the way to think about it is that there are four different worlds of voice acting. There are standard voiceover scripts that many think of when you hear the word voiceover. There are audiobooks, fiction and factual, animations and cartoons, and serious acting work for high-end video games. And any area of voice work can be done from a home studio. And in fact, so many people have now got the facilities to record at home now. And even if you're not that technical, once your studio is set up by someone who is, it's pretty easy to use to record and edit your scripts. And of course, we have fast internet and satellite technologies, and you can be directed with your headphones on from any other studio around the planet with hardly any latency or delay at all. For very big projects and high-end game projects, you will have to still physically go to a studio. For major games, they're mostly done in Los Angeles, but for the lion's share of all other voiceover work, you can make a very good income working from your home studio. And even if you eventually get most of your work at an external studio, a home studio is still useful for quickly recording demos and for doing auditions for jobs, saving you so much time traveling to another studio. So let's run quickly through each of those four worlds of voice acting. And this is aiming, as I say, at people who are actors already, who have the skills of a traditional stage actor, who want to transfer their skills into earning income as a voice actor. Nobody can be brilliant at everything, so I strongly suggest you listen closely to the various areas of this type of work and then apply yourself first to the type of work where you think you've got most chance of getting some traction in. Then you can build up your career from there by exploring other areas of voice acting. World one of voice acting, voiceover. Now this is the area of work that most people tend to think of. It's recording YouTube promos, documentary work, e-learning scripts, telephone announcements, commercials for radio and TV, and a whole raft of other, sometimes unusual, uses for voiceovers, talking vending machines and elevators, rail station announcements, and so on. The types of clients you'll get for voiceover work can be enormously wide as well. You may get one-man band producers with fairly limited budgets, but may be able to provide you with a lot of regular work. So, you know, you've got to take the rough with the smooth, the swings and the roundabouts, of course, and you get the high-end TV commercial work. These jobs can be paid extremely well. You usually deal with advertising agencies or high-end production companies. Now, for these bigger jobs, payment is usually split into two. You get paid for the recording session, and there's a usage fee paid afterwards on top. Sometimes you see agencies record a few possible voiceovers, try them out in the video editing suite and try them out with the end client. And they actually only use one voiceover. So that means if you don't end up on the TV ad, you get to keep your recording session fee, but you don't get the usage fee, which is usually actually much more than just the session fee. And usage fees are sometimes paid again if they want to use your voice after the agreed term of the contract. In fact, they're always paid. 
<laughs> World Tour of Voice Acting Audiobooks. Now, if you're an actor who loves doing different character voices, this is where the world of fiction audiobook recording could be right up your street, and they can be great fun to do, creating character voices and assigning them throughout the novels that you record. Yes, I know audiobook projects take much longer to record and to edit than the shorter voiceover scripts, but audiobooks can be really satisfying to produce if you find the right kind of project and where you're on royalties, you could be earning fairly decent money over a long time without recording anything again. Or you can get paid per finished hour of recording and you're fully bought out. Do whatever is uh, agreed between you and the author and or publisher. If you're interested in any particular factual subject, of course, there are many non-fiction books as well that you could narrate. And for every audiobook project that may take you a couple of weeks to do each one, it keeps you busy every day. And once you're established in the world of audiobooks, there's often a lot of repeat work when the author who liked you for their first book pens a new project. To start, I suggest you go to acx.com, the big worldwide platform that links together narrators, producers, authors, publishers. And you can upload your examples and audition for books looking for narrators. It's best to learn the skills of an audiobook producer as well to add to your existing skill as a narrator uh, because this is what most authors and publishers want. They want like someone who can do everything. Someone who can take their text, adapt their print or Kindle version for audio use. You record it and you edit it to the exact specifications needed for selling to the public, the technical specifications on one of the various audiobook platforms. And we've got loads more detailed information on this in our voice acting course at voiceovermasterclass.com. Now, world three of voice acting, animations and cartoons. If you're a fan of this kind of world anyway, you may take to it like a duck to water. You need to be completely free of any inhibitions, love making silly voices, making a fool of yourself, and be able to come up with a whole load of often crazy voices for characters that you see on screen. Now, quite often when there are auditions in this type of work, you're sent just a picture of a character that's been created and you have to work out from looking at it and understanding the context what their voice would sound like on screen. For some lower budget animation projects, you're sometimes asked to do two or three characters in the same cartoon. So if you think you're flexible enough to offer this as well, make sure that you say this when you're auditioning, as it will save the client money and hassle to have one decent voice actor, i.e. you, to do two or three character voices in the same project. If you're very computer literate, you could even train yourself to learn a software program like Adobe Character Animator, where your computer camera looks at your face and synchronizes up your face movements and the mouth with the cartoon character in your project live. Here you can make money not just recording character voiceovers, but the whole cartoon production as well if you wanted to. World 4 of voice acting games. Depending on which data you look at, the world of video games is bigger than that of the movie industry these days, and it's moved on a long way from the old stereotype game characters from the days of Monkey Island or whatever. And you really have serious acting for the high-end games, because you as the voice actor need to relate realistically and naturally to the game player, who should be totally immersed in the game. Unlike the first three worlds of voice acting, where you can market yourself often without any dedicated exclusive agent assistance, for game work you really need to be represented by a dedicated game agent, who you would impress by creating showreels that show your acting prowess, not just that you can do some nice voices and a few accents, which is sort of nice, but not essential. If they wanted a real Norwegian accent, they would get a real Norwegian who could speak English, you see. Um, but, you know, they want to know you can act in various situations. And a decent creative showreel that shows this will open up the door to an agent and they'll provide auditions for new game projects that are coming up that may suit you. Well, I hope this brief introduction to the world of voice acting has interested you. And if you'd like to know more, please check out our voice acting course, Four hours of video-based training hosted by myself and Katie Brody covering voiceover, audiobooks, animations and games. We also have sections on 
how to choose your home studio equipment, how to set up your recording facility. We also have a fully downloadable resource document and even sample agreements that you're welcome to adapt for your own use with clients. So please find out more at voiceovermasterclass.com and good luck for the future.